Okay, we're going to get started here in just a second. Looks like we got some people starting to watch. Excellent. Let me turn some of this stuff off. Well, hello and welcome to the American Society of Regional Anesthesia, Regional Anesthesia and Pain Podcast, Azra Rap. I'm your host, Raj Gupta, and we have an amazing group of people to talk with us today and a really fun and interesting topic. Um, for those of you guys who are watching live, I encourage you to put comments in the comment stream down below, and um, we'll try to bring those up with the guests today and, and bring those into our conversation. So please stay engaged. I think it'll be a fun conversation today. Before we get started, I do want to talk to you about a couple of things about ASRA, things that are coming up in the very near future. So first off is um, the ASRA fall meeting is coming up uh, in a few months. This is going to be both a uh, in-person and virtual meeting. So there'll be components for both people. It's November 18th through the 20th in San Francisco, California. That may seem like a far time away from now, but one important thing about that is that the submissions for abstracts uh, are open already. So you can go ahead and start um, submitting abstracts right now. Um, I think it's gonna be a phenomenal meeting in San Francisco. And I think uh, having attended the regional anesthesia meeting in this last spring, um, the in-person meeting was felt safe. It was well done. And it was a lot of fun to be back in person and enjoying the company and, and the collegiality of my friends and colleagues from across the country. So I encourage you to go to azra.com, find out about this meeting and submit an abstract. The other thing I want to announce today is that uh, Azra is doing a really special thing coming up very soon called the Azra Members Forum. This is an opportunity for anybody in Azra to join a conversation with our Azra president, our brand new Azra uh, president, Sam Naruz. And he really wants to uh, have a good conversation with the membership, find out what they like about Azra, where they want to get involved and some of the and tell them about some of the things that they can do to be an active participant in this organization. But also he wants to hear feedback about how Azra can get better and how uh, to include more people in the organization, in the opportunities that this organization can uh, present people. So I encourage you to uh, check out this members forum. You do have to reserve a spot. So check out the link at the bottom and reserve a spot. This is July 1st, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. So go on the link, reserve your spot, put it on your calendar and join Sam in a great conversation that day. Okay, so enough for the announcements for right now. I'm going to start introducing and bringing all our guests onto the screen and my co-hosts. There we go. Look at that crowd. We have we have now now Gary sideways, but he'll he'll get straightened out here in just a second. So first, introduce my co-host here, Sandy Christensen's joining us, and uh, we haven't seen Sandy in a while. But I uh, hope you're doing well, Sandy. How are you? I'm doing well, Raj. Thanks so much. It's nice to be back, and it's crazy. It's like 2020 went into a sinkhole, and now I feel like I'm on the other side of it. Absolutely. I don't know if you guys feel the same. Yeah, I feel like I'm sticking my head above water just a little bit and and, and feeling okay so far. So <laughs> Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Now, Gary's joining us uh, uh, from his car because he's, uh, and he's not driving right now, I don't think. So, oh, we just lost Gary. So that's what happens when he's coming from his car. He's going to a hockey game tonight, but he told me he'd join us for a little while. He's That's how committed he is, is that even as he anticipates to go into a hockey game, he thought he'd join us. But we'll get him back here in just a moment. And he's coming. Um, so I'm going to introduce our two guests today. Terrace Gross is coming to us. He's an uh, assistant professor at Hospital University of Pennsylvania. Terrace, how are you doing today? I'm pretty good. Thank you so much for having me on, Raj. Yeah, and, and we also have Melody Herman. She's a regional and acute pain anesthesiologist at Scope Anesthesia Atrium Health Carolinas Medical Center. How are you, Melody? Doing great. Thanks so much for having me. Awesome. And Gary's back in the car. On its way to the hockey game. I am not driving. My brother-in-law <laughs> is, but we are we are heading over to the Nassau Veterans Memorial Coliseum to see the Islanders. Lovely jersey over here. My childhood team uh, go against game six. So hopefully they'll win. And Gary has no conflicts of interest with the Islanders, so he's allowed to wear a T-shirt if he wants to. <laughs> so, okay, anyway, let me bring up our topic today and why I wanted to have Terrace and uh, Melody on today is um, – 
you know, the, the world of regional anesthesia has had, um, especially in the era of ultrasound, um, in the last 15 years that I've been practicing, um, has really benefited from uh, online videos and tutorials on how to do ultrasound regional anesthesia. And ultrasound is such a visual uh, medium that it lends itself to that. A um, lot of really high quality, well-produced ultrasound videos on teaching every different kind of block you can imagine. And I know that our trainees, and not even my trainees only, but myself, my colleagues, frequently refer back to these to re refresh our memory and, and to learn new details, new tricks, new tips for regional anesthesia. Well, there's a new era coming. And the new era is uh, whether you want to call it uh, shorter attention spans or you want to call it uh, just-in-time learning, where people need little bits of information really quickly to get that piece of knowledge that they need to do the next thing. Um, that's coming. And there's some people that are on the front end of that curve. And Terrace and Melody have been doing some work in this arena. And, and I wanted to talk to them both about um, how how maybe the next version of video learning or online learning um, needs to evolve and, and maybe where the opportunities are in that arena. So Melody, I want to start with you because um, uh, I think that some of the stuff and, and you're you're relatively fresh out of training, right? You're how, how far out of training are you? I finished fellowship in 2016. Okay, so you're, yeah. you're, you're medium fresh. Medium so, fresh, yeah. Medium, medium fresh. well. <laughs> but, but what I do want to, to, to explore with people is that it doesn't take somebody who's a full professor to do this stuff, you know, and, and put themselves out there. It does take some courage to put yourself out there. Talk a little bit about what you've been working on with these videos, and, um, and, and I'll kind of show a couple of these here in a second just so people can see it, get an idea of what you've been doing. Absolutely. So like a, a lot of my colleagues during 2020, when the pandemic hit and elective surgeries were canceled, I went from being quite busy to all of a sudden having a, quite a bit of free time. So like a lot of the world, I joined TikTok and um, I found some educational videos on there like Institute of Human Anatomy, um, short 15, 30 second educational videos. And I thought, well, I haven't really seen a, a regional anesthesia uh, content. So why don't I start making some of this? And it it kind of took off. Um, more so on Twitter, I would say the TikTok crowd is more, um, uh, you know, not folks that are necessarily medical, certainly not people, not so many people that are regional anesthesia trained. Um, but that sort of format of like a short 15, 30 second uh, video with um, some pleasing music in the background is an idea I got from TikTok. And I sort of spun that with a uh, regional um, uh, twist and it it's, uh, seems to have done well. I, th I think you're muted, uh, Raj. I should never mute myself, sorry, I apologize. Um, so what kind of audience are you getting? What, what does it mean when you say that you're, you, you, it was is it being received well? So there's sort of two different pathways. Um, so I've got the Twitter audience, which is um, folks that are uh, either anesthesiologists or have an interest in regional anesthesia. And, um, you know, they, they are able to, you know, refer back to these um, videos as kind of a guide when you're learning a new block, um, both online and in person. Like I know I'm in private practice and a lot of my colleagues have a strong interest in learning regional anesthesia, but we're also covering a lot of room. So for me, it's really helpful to say, hey, I'm going to do this block. Here's this video. If you want to look at it real quick, join me. We'll go through it. And then they can refer back to it so that they become familiar and they're able to um, eventually, you know, do it on their own. And um, um, is this something that uh, you feel like the conversation is better than you would normally have without that video as a platform or a foundation for the conversation? Yeah, ab absolutely. Like um, one of my colleagues is uh, learning how to do uh, fascia iliaca blocks and I went through it and I'm trying to like show him the bow tie and everything. And he's like, this just looks like a piece of abstract art to me. I do not know what you are talking about. And I'm like, okay. And then I, you know, showed this video that I made previously, there's your iliacus, there's your sartorius, there's your internal oblique, there's the bow tie. And he was like, oh, okay. And being able to refer back to that and kind of having a visual in your head, especially when you're learning how to do something new, I think is, is really helpful. 
And Terrace, you've been doing something similar. Um, I, I don't know uh, what platforms you've used. Uh, I know you, we've talked about um, TikTok before with you as well. Um, and, and, and what kind of experience are you finding with these short videos? So initially, we were trying to come up with an idea for patient education. We thought, what would be a good way to show patients what it's like to come to a hospital? What, kind of, what, what should they expect when they're having an anesthetic? What is a regional anesthetic? And the initial pickup, you know, for in that regard, didn't really take off all the way. And then we started to watch. We saw this become an actually an excellent way to teach our residents. So we would have CA two, CA threes coming back on the wraps rotation on our regional rotation at Penn, and they just need to brush up on some of their skills. And Melody had these awesome videos on TikTok. And we, I would refer the residents to them and say, hey, if you're forgetting how to do a super clap, or if you're forgetting the, you know, which, which of the nerve roots you need to block, take a look at, you know, Dr. Herman's uh, or her videos. So we started to kind of the residents would frequently, when we were coming on on service, I would send them the link. They would take a look at it, and they seemed to. It was a very, very excellent feedback. So I decided that you know what, let's let's have let's add on to this content. Let's add some of our own. And using the videos that we use for patient education, we decided to do some of some of our own with uh, with some of the regional education topics as well. That's really cool. So for those of us who are kind of technology or more so like Twitter naive, maybe I'll say social media naive, you know, are these videos that you can save onto your phone or is it that every time we want to access one of these videos, we, we log on to Twitter? Can you walk me through how that works? So on my end, I know, uh, so through my website, I have them linked to Vimeo. I know I can save them. I'm not sure um, if others can. TikTok, you can save videos if you get, if the video gets 10,000 views that, or more, then TikTok enables a save feature. Otherwise, I think you just have to screen grab it. Um, same with Twitter. I think you just have to screen grab the, the video. Um, and I'm not sure if they're able to be downloaded through Vimeo. I will look into that and I'll enable mine to be downloaded if they aren't already, if that's a feature that I, I could add. I think if you have like Vimeo accounts, um, just like with YouTube accounts, I think you can kind of create a playlist, like save a playlist. And so it's not downloaded. You still need an internet connection to play it, but you, you have quick access. And so... Um, you can collect, you know, videos from different people and, and, and different sources and create uh, your quick list for accessing those kinds of videos. I think you can do that on Vimeo, but you do, you do have to log in, create an account with them and all that kind of stuff. Terrence, have you found a different way that people like your trainees and stuff like that, they're keeping track of this stuff? One of the ways are just sharing the hyperlink to the website. But the other one, like Melody said, was literally using your iPhone if, or whatever it's a smartphone you have and being able to do a screen record. And so that kind of gets around everything, just recording the entire screen. Yeah, but it doesn't give Melody credit for every time they watch it. <laughs> I'm okay with that as long as I'm teaching somebody how to do a blog, it's fine with me. No, I, how many, uh, oh, sorry, Raj. How no, many, ahead, how many um, views have you guys had on these? Like, is it, you know, in the hundreds? Is it in the thousands? Like how, how widespread is this? Uh, well, it, it varies depending on um, the video. Um, I think to date the most viewed one on Twitter was a QL video, a quadratus, anterior quadratus laborum block video I did um, a few months ago. It's sort of hard to, to get that information from TikTok. Um, you do have views there. The TikTok crowd isn't so much interested in the technicality of how to do a block. I think my most viewed TikTok block video was actually a very basic sciatic nerve at the pop fossa uh, video that just said, this is the largest nerve in your body. And people found that fascinating, but it wasn't <laughs> really like how to do a block, but they love that part. <laughs> You're getting the general audience that way. Exactly. Well, it goes to Terrace's point that there's a there's still a patient education opportunity with some of these platforms that that people I mean, you know, we joke around about anesthesiology is sort of a mysterious field of medicine that even the people on the other side of the curtain don't really know what we do. 
um, many times. So we can't imagine that our patients know what we do most of the time. And so there is still opportunity. I don't know how much you see interaction, either of you see interaction with non-medical people on these things. So uh, it's very funny because before, I actually had a TikTok account earlier, earlier on, um, before I started doing actually the regional education that was the patient education one. And there was quite a bit of questions and almost every day I was fielding a question from a patient like, you know, what is this? How are you doing this? Uh, like, what, what should I expect when I come for a surgery? And my wife made me shut it down. She said, "Why are you on TikTok?" There's a bunch, it's a bunch. It's like there's a bunch of teeny boppers on there jumping around in bathing suits. Please turn, take this off. I said, "You're no, trying no, to be an influencer, Terrace. You might get a sponsorship I, with a cologne or something." Well, I was telling her, I said, "Listen, this is helping patients." And she looked on. She goes, "I see. I see 150 people have viewed this. Who are you influencing?" <laughs> and so, and that kind of that shut it down for me. But you know what Melody said? You're right. It's. Um, the, the general population goes for keywords and for uh, you know largest nerve in the body. You know, the, you, know, you won't be able to move your leg for 24 hours if you do this. Like you have to target the the language in order to, get, to grab people's attention. Whereas on Twitter, you know you have your community of regional anesthesiologists and and students who are learning and would like to get more information, and that you will get more, I guess, focused views on Twitter that way. I, I would agree with that. And I'll also add, there seems to be a familiarity with OB anesthesia, especially epidurals. Um, any epidural content really just takes off on TikTok. And I, I think it's because patients don't, um, just in the nature of our field, they're talking with the surgeon beforehand, but they're meeting, of, meeting us day of. And it's really, in most situations, at the discretion of the surgeon, whether the patient is offered a block. So many of them don't even know a block is an option beforehand. So uh, one of my goals with the TikTok audience is to, you know, say, hey, you, you know what an epidural is? This is a, a regional anesthesia technique that's a little bit different, but what will give you uh, pain control amongst other things. Um, this is how we do it. Um, and answering questions like, is it safe? How long does it last? Um, things like that. One of them was, uh, I had a question, why, why don't you do this block usually when we're asleep? Um, and I went through, that's because we want to avoid nerve injury. And if you're a little sedated, we'll, we'll know uh, if we're too close to the nerve, but we may not have that information if you're totally under general anesthesia. Yeah, it makes me wonder, Sandy, with some of the chronic pain stuff that you guys do that I don't even know what the heck you guys do anymore because it's evolved so much since I was learning about um, chronic pain procedures. I wonder if there's still an audience, uh, especially in the chronic pain world where there's so much craving for information that maybe we're not meeting people where they are and and providing that information in the way they want to hear it. Yeah, I, I think that's a great point. I, I know a lot of my patients are kind of scanning the internet looking for, you know, just different keywords of like chronic pain or um, sciatica and then kind of finding their own information. And a lot of it is industry um, information that you know, is definitely helpful, um, but certainly biased. And it, I, I think there's definitely an audience and a need. It's just that content, um, I don't think is there, but you know, this would certainly be an interesting, uh, thing to develop in the chronic pain field too. Raj, you can take that up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hold the camera for you, Sandy. How about that? <laughs> You, we you, can do you, it together. Yes. I, I, I think there's a few dances you need to practice, I think, to be on TikTok I, properly. Yeah, I think we can get right. Gary, Gary started on it. Gary, yeah. There you go. So, so it, that's a good, that's a good uh, segue into my next question, which is, how do you do this? Um, so I think the uh, outsider's perspective is that, uh, oh, they're just, they just use their phone and they hold it up to the ultrasound machine. They record a few things. They talk into the phone and maybe scribble on their phone. But... And, and in some ways, you probably could do some basic videos that way. How did you guys get started on the technical side? And then where have you evolved to? So, Terrace, why don't you start with that and talk a little bit about your process, where you kind of evolved through this. So, I initially would shoot on TikTok, and I found that it to be actually a little laggy. Um, and I was, you know, I, I was having trouble actually putting the various... Uh, markers of various titles, subtitles to different things. I reached out to Melody and some other people I said, you know, what do you use? Do you use third-party software? And 
then found a different program that allowed me actually to create the video. And then I would finally upload it to TikTok with a, kind of like a final version, which I found to be much easier because you didn't require a constant internet uh, interface. And so that that was much easier for me. Most of my, all, almost all the work I do, the same things we did for Azure for the spring meeting, uh, a lot of the videos we, we edited on the phones, uh, it does take some time, but the final video is then just uploaded to either TikTok or YouTube or whatever platform you want to use. Melody, is your process very similar? Yes, it's similar. So the app I use, and I have no affiliation with this company or anything, it's called Video Leap. Um, I do all of the video edits on my phone. I find that to be easiest. Um, and it's actually really easily easy to use. I'm not a tech person. I self-taught myself how to do it and to link it to, you know, different, I would save sounds uh, from TikTok, like trending sounds, add them to the video and do the editing, the overlays uh, from there and all keeping it in 15 to 30 seconds. Yeah, that What editing. are trending sounds? Tell me more. <laughs> 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 I'm not on TikTok as much any, anymore. I'm working quite a bit more than, than I was in summer 2020. But if you literally just scroll on there, you'll, you'll hear a sound. You're like, oh, I kind of like that. And then there's one, if something's going viral, like a sound is going viral. You hear that over and over. You're like, okay, if I maybe link this to the video, it'll get more views. Um, so that, that's a trending sound. So that I'm going awesome. to <laughs> Sandy, educate you because I got two teenage uh -huh. daughters, which is the Please. only way I'm knowledgeable. My my older daughter walks around the house doing TikTok dances, and she doesn't even uh -huh. have TikTok. I don't know where she's watching these things because they uh -huh. get, pop, get populated everywhere. She just stands in random places, no music playing, nothing, just starts doing weird dances. <laughs> so so I've, I'm, I'm learning through uh, osmosis in our household. But mm -hmm. I mean, basically, these these are professional songs that they've got clips on that you can choose from on TikTok. And it's so like it's pro level music, but it's the 15 to 30 second clip. And like one song, every like one, the classic thing is that somebody makes a dance to it. And then everybody tries to mimic that same dance to the same song, but in their own flavor, their own way. And, you know, are hoping to get attracted, uh, get attention on those things. But those TikTok makes those clips available. So it's easy for people to just say, okay, I want that music. And so some, some songs just become popular. And so they're all over the place and, and they go, it moves with time. So a song that was popular six months ago may not be seen much now, but it's moved on to something else. So um, that, that's kind of what people are, uh, uh, people are doing nowadays. And so they're, they're, they're kind of figuring out like, like Melody is, is that, Hey, if you tap right into that trend, you can absorb some of that virality that's happening and maybe attract attention somewhere that you normally wouldn't. Am I, am I interpreting that correctly, Melody? You in my, are in my, you, my you dad, are. my dad version of this. It, it, there was actually, there was a song last summer from a rapper in uh, in San Francisco named Saweetie. And she had this song called tap in. I'm like, I'm going to do a tap box video to that. And so I did <laughs> and it, it worked. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, it's, it's really, I mean, like it's as basic as that, that like a little catchphrase or something in there will cue somebody up to an action that they do on their videos. And so, I mean, I guess Melody's uh, picking up on some of that stuff. Um, you know, go ahead, Ter. I think the, the other thing to remember is that as anesthesiologists, we're always taught to remain calm, composed, try to sell things for what they are at level. And with doing some of these videos, like I said earlier, you need to almost sensationalize sometimes, mm -hmm. uh, like, you know, or like saying with the epidurals, will you really be paralyzed? Question mark, question mark, question mark. You know, <laughs> ar arrows down here to find out, right? And, and that's but that that big, will get, big that emojis will get everywhere, big big right, emojis, right? right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's and it's against our nature. You know, we don't we, we are sort of behind the curtain. We tend to not be visible, but I think that in a vacuum, other people fill it with maybe misinformation. Um, and, and I think that it's important for us to get out there and, and share better information than, than other people are if, if we're more knowledgeable about it. Um, uh, you know, the other thing I've noticed is that y you guys aren't too serious about it, right? There's a lightheartedness to this, um, this platform, this um, set of videos compared to a traditional, very uh, conservative block video where it's like, 
you know, PowerPoint slides and then a video clip and then more PowerPoint slides and someone talking very specifically. Um, how do you, how do you create that mood in your videos? Um, for me, it's just the, the 15 to 30 second time frame that I'm sort of bound by when I'm making it. So I don't have time to go through all the little minutia of a t particular block. It's more of a little, a little snippet of, of the block. It's kind of like a, a cliff notes version. Um, so for me, uh, that, that's what limits me to the, just the, I guess the, uh, big picture, uh, concept and, and not the, uh, more of an academic type, uh, block video that you might find on YouTube or somewhere else, like a five, 10 minute video. I, I also, I make the assumption that most of the people that will be looking at it at this point have a basic knowledge of what the block is and they just need a little bit of a brush up. Uh, so again, not going into the details, it's just this is just the tech, technical aspect of it. Where to put the probe, what do you need to see, and where do you put the needle? It's the kind of the questions I had, which wasn't really relayed well in textbooks earlier on. And that's what we turned to YouTube early, you know, early in our career for. Can you guys give us an example of like a 15 minute snippet of your work? 15 seconds, seconds. 15 seconds, yes. 15 minutes is too long. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I meant seconds. Let me see if I can pull up one of their videos again. So, um, Can we get sound to... on it? I was trying to, but it wasn't playing very loud. So I can play it, but it's sort of muted. I'm not sure why. Um, I'm trying to pull up. So here's, uh, let me share this screen. This is Terrace's video here. Let me turn the sound on. I don't think he's got the music, the viral music going, but. Very cool. I like the stoplight. Yeah. So, I mean, what I what I notice when I look at this video is that there's a lot of editing there. I mean, you're cut, 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 and then you're talking on top of it, and then you're putting labels and markers, and you know, it's deceptive in that you know it it may not seem like um, there's a lot of it looks like a really quickly put together stuff, maybe some scribbled drawings, but actually there's a lot of thought and a lot of very careful, precise editing put in with good overlay of audio as well. I have one question for Melody. Do you do an entire 15 second video from start to finish saying everything you did say without stopping or pausing or without clipping? No, I, there's a lot of pausing, a lot of clipping, a lot of re-recording. I'll say something and I'll speak to closely into the microphone of my phone and it just sounds off and so I'll re-record. It takes me to make a 15 second clip. It takes me at least an hour, hour and a half. And that's on the, the minimum side, more like two, even sometimes three hours. Yeah. So we got a great question from our buddy Amit Pawa here. I'm going to put it up on the screen. He said, Hey guys, would you consider recording a tips and tricks video for how to make a great TikTok video? So uh, a how-to of, you know, what you guys, so how do you compress that two hours of work into 30 seconds about the two hours of work? <laughs> Absolutely. I'd be, I'd be happy to do that. Yeah. I'm working on a, um, what was the one I'm working on? I'm working on a Serratus uh, plane block video. That's, that's my next one uh, that I'm working on. It's all recorded. It's all there. Um, but I can get into the process of, of making that. It's not hard. It's not difficult to do. I mean, a, a ten, these 10-year-old, 12-year-olds are doing it on TikTok. It's not hard to do, but it does take a little bit of time. 
I'm going to show one of yours, uh, Melody, uh, and I, I hope the audio comes in uh, at all here. This is the anterior QL block that you were talking about. I don't know if you guys could hear all of that, but um, that's a little taste of Melody's uh, video work. Uh, I think my favorite point was the uh, arrow that said here, like put your medicine here. <laughs> You're muted still, Melody. Yeah, and I, that was a request actually from um, the the president of uh, SOAP. She's at Columbia University, and I'm sector anesthesiologist. Um, Ruth Lindo. Yeah, so she yeah. was. She asked me. I had. Um, I'm hardly ever on Facebook, but there's an anesthesiologist mom group on Facebook, and we were talking yeah. about what we did in 2020, and I had mentioned that. And she said, "Oh, can you do a QL?" Uh, anterior QL video for our OB patients, and um, I said absolutely. And then three months later, I <laughs> finally finished it, uh, <laughs> and then and then put it out there. Um, so uh, uh, that's where where that video came from. That's excellent. Uh, what's next with this? Um, wh where do you guys think that this needs to go? Um, more people doing this, different kinds of material, different platforms. What, what what's the right way forward? guide us that are listening to you guys and learning from your experience. I think uh, creating somewhere where we can actually collect a lot of the videos and have them available uh, all at once. And so people can actually, you know, look at the various videos together in one area and compare, contrast what they like, what they don't like, because one video may show some things that the other one may miss and vice versa, but also need to make sure that it's actually fact checked. I had, I was very fortunate that uh, Twitter, uh, Gordon Lancelot, mm -hmm. he, he looked at my video and said, you know, you're missing, you're pointing at the wrong thing there with your stoplight. You're highlighting, you're saying it's C5, 6, and 7. Your 6 right. is split. And then when I scan myself, re scan myself, I said, oh my God, he's totally right. Yeah. So, you know, making sure that people actually having fact, good videos with good content and uh, fact checked. Did Ali Warlick pay you to say that? Because uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's what exactly what I've been pitching to her to do for uh, through our website committee at Azra is the exact thing that you're talking about. Were you on that inside? Were you on that call? I was trying to segue. <laughs> it's like I, a I, peer review process for videos. It's, I mean, I think it's a great idea. Absolutely. I had a similar experience with a, uh, a Dr. Canal Block video I posted, um, I think, last fall. And it was actually the level of the femoral triangle. So I was uh, quickly corrected with that. Um, and as far as uh, directions that this may go, I, I think it could, it's a great way to um, get questions answered. So another anesthesiologist and I had a question about where is the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve? I have never looked for this nerve in my life. And so I was reading articles, looking at other scans. There was a dearth of information out there on scanning techniques. I found what I thought was it. I posted it to uh, Twitter and there was a lot of controversy about where is the nerve? Is this it? Uh, the chronic chronic pain actually chimed in, I think, because you all are, are more familiar with the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve, um, or you're um, looking at it more for different chronic pain uh, syndromes. And so, um, so we finally uh, got some input on where where the nerve is, but we still, I think, uh, Terrace, you're still scanning for it, and so am I. I, I haven't found it on my own scan. <laughs> So, uh, so I think, but I think it's a great way to get questions answered. I mean, it's so, uh, it's so much easier to put it in video instead of, uh, words when you have a question about, uh, a blo an, uh, particular part of, uh, ultrasound or sono anatomy. Yeah. To answer your question, I've never blocked the posterior, uh, cutane femoral cutaneous nerve, the lateral, sure but not the, not the posterior. Um, and I would have no idea where to find it either. So if you do make a video, you let me know. 
Absolutely. It may be a, maybe a mythical nerve that doesn't exist, and you're chasing chasing that uh, pot of gold at the end of that rainbow. But whoever gets there first gets to post their video and become viral on their poster of femoral cutaneous nerve block. <laughs> this is going to be a joint a joint effort, I think. Joint effort, right? <laughs> Raj yeah. has Asra thought about kind of taking some of these videos and get, kind of putting them through the peer review process and then posting them kind of on the Asra website. Yeah, so that's the teaser that uh, Terrace was kind of leading on to is mm. this is a this is a work in progress. But, um, you know, I proposed the idea to Azra and, and the website committee is kind of uh, hacking through the details of it. But I think that, um, you know, we've long debated about Azra producing its own content and it never quite seemed like the right thing to do because it felt like reinventing the wheel. And, and you also... Um, you actually create a barrier on your membership in, in their willingness to create new content. And so if Azra did something like that, people like Melody and Terrace might not feel the urge to create what they're creating. And so you lose that sort of innovation, that, that creativity. So instead, we're trying to figure out how Azra could be a collator of, of that information. So um, if Terrace makes a video on, um, he's got his interscaling block video and Melody's got her interscaling block video and Nysora has theirs, and Duke has theirs and, you know, and then all of a sudden Sandy goes, I love TikTok and I'm making mine and then you make yours. And um, now, now on one page, we have five videos with very different perspectives on the same information, very different content, but it's all talking about the same topic. And so it gives an opportunity for a person to go to one place and, and see all these different variations and probably get a more 360 degree perspective on this one procedure um, and then now iterate that versus multiple different kinds of procedures multiple different opportunities and you can create a whole library of collated material and then i think there's a value and potentially a peer review process in that as well so that when you get to the page you've got some sense of you don't eliminate things necessarily from the content but you kind of rank them in of different quality or, or by different standards um, so that the viewer has that information when they start. So th there's a lot of nuance and detail still being worked out about how that would happen, but I think there's a need for it. And I think we are trying to get Azure to leverage its brand to, to be that source, that one-stop shop again, and not to take away from the stuff that people are creating, but actually to lead people towards it. So, you know, to answer your earlier question, how do I keep track of this stuff? Well, if you only had one place to go, you could get to it all the time. And, and, and hopefully that's, and, and I, I honestly was not planning on discussing that today, but I think it, it's a natural consequence of disparate sources of information uh, all over the internet. And I think to add to that, you know, you, sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And so, if, you know, if you don't know that Melody or um, Tross's video are out there, then, then you're missing out clearly. I mean, there's right. some good content and great music apparently i'm gonna check it out the moment we get off this call <laughs> yeah and 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 i think that um you know we want to encourage people to feel like you know maybe maybe i don't have a thousand followers or ten thousand followers but if i can get my video posted on this website that everybody goes to maybe i can drive an audience towards my content and I only made one video because it took me, instead of two hours, it took me 12 hours to make this one 30 second video. Um, I don't have time to make 15 of them, but maybe that one video is damn good, right? And and people can can be directed that way. That's my hope. That's that's sort of the egalitarian kind of hope for this some of this stuff. I think Terrace is about to fade out on us. So I think this is a good time to, yeah, he said his battery's running low. So we're, we're, we're going to, um, we're actually going to wind down here. Any last thoughts, Terrace, before you kind of blip out on us? Oh, we may have already lost him. Oh. I want to say thank you so much. Sorry. It's literally every other word right now. That's okay. Yeah, We can still hear your, can you, you can speak for a second if you want to have any last thoughts because we can hear you. I just, I welcome anyone else who wants to do this. This is an edu excellent educational resource. And I hope, you know, we can get more people inspired to do regional anesthesia and to put quality content out there. People need education. Ultrasounds are getting cheaper and it's gonna make, you know, administering anesthesia safer the world over. 
Thank you, Terrace. Terrace was kind enough to join us from his vacation in Mexico. So he's on the Riviera Maya and enjoying his family time and took a break to <laughs> hang out with us. So I really appreciate it. Um, and, uh, and I'm impressed the internet quality lasted as long as it did. Uh, Mel Melody, any last thoughts before we wind down here? I think it's a great idea to have Azure as a forum for these videos. Again, like you said, not to take away from uh, content creators, but have a forum where you can post and you can learn and people can see that 360 perspective. I think that's an awesome idea. Yeah. And if, if you guys want to find stuff that Terrace or uh, Melody are making, they're uh, on the screen at, at dr underscore tgro for Terrace and at anesthesia doc md for melody um that's their social media handles you can probably find their content pretty quickly if you search for that um and sandy any last thoughts on this i know this is uh, almost seems like foreign territory to you but i'm sure it's got some gears turning in your head yeah absolutely now i need to find out if someone's doing this for chronic pain already so i got my my homework yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a huge opportunity in chronic pain. I feel like with regional, we're more talking to ourselves, but I feel like the potential audience uh, in patients for chronic pain, again, filling a vacuum of information um, could be huge. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I know my patients would definitely be interested in something like this. Yeah. Um, and, and, and as Terrace uh, has said here, it, it is a <laughs> rabbit hole and a... Uh, <laughs> And, and you have to be careful and I'm sure it takes a lot of time. Um, and, 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 uh, as our friend, uh, Chad Brummett would tell you, social media can be a little bit tricky for pain physicians because there are, um, people out there in the world who have their own agendas and they'll, they'll often use you as a launching pad to make their agenda known. And so, um, not to, to scare people off from it. If someone's interested in doing it, it's just, you have to go in with thick skin and very carefully um, because uh, there are critics out there waiting to be critical. Um, and regardless of the content you put out there, but I still think that this is a way to reach an audience um, that probably needs to hear some of this stuff. All right. Well, I want to thank all of you guys for joining us. I know Gary tried to join us, but I think in a moving vehicle, it was hard to maintain a decent internet connection. So we will definitely get Gary back on the next time. Uh, he made a valiant effort right before his hockey game. And uh, I know Eric was going to join us too, but he said he's burnt out on work this week. So as we ask people more and more time into the evenings, I know that's hard to do, but I do appreciate all of you guys joining us. Terrace and Melody, you guys were wonderful. I'm so, so impressed with the work that you do. I have done uh, and I, a small amount of video editing and your 30 seconds to, in two hours is quite impressive to me because every minute of video I make usually takes me about four to six hours. So um, I'm impressed that you can do it that quickly. It's it's hard, hard work. And I really appreciate the, the creativity, innovation and uh, dedication you guys put to this. Sandy, it's wonderful to see you and talk to you. Um, I hope to see you soon. I don't know if you're going to make it to the fall meeting this year, but if, I'll if be so, there. I'll, I'll see you there. So, yeah, I'll be all right. There. Thank see you, everybody. You soon, Have a good night. Thank Have a good you night. so much.